Hello, this is Chris from the Cinema Savvy Movie Podcast, and I am back with some more reaction videos right now. Uh, these weren't planned at all. These have literally gone up within, like, the last hour. This is the Wonder Woman official Comic-Con trailer. Um, I was aware that Comic-Con was going on, and I guess I was a bit of an idiot to not assume that we were going to get some DC stuff. And, uh, literally, George just sent me the message. He was like, dude, Wonder Woman and Justice League trailer out now. Get a reaction out for it. So, I was actually napping. It, we're having some kind of, like, huge heat wave in the UK. I was out for the count, saw the message, and was like, well, Wonder Woman literally just jumped straight out of bed on for a reaction now. So, apologies if I'm a little bit out of it, but I'm hoping that this trailer snaps me out of it, because... Despite my opinions on Batman v Superman and Man of Steel, um, I am still looking forward to what DC has planned. Um, I hope they can kind of find their footing, and I know that there are still a lot of people that really did like Batman v Superman. If you want to find those people, uh, check out my Batman v Superman Ultimate Cut reaction. Um, yeah, I got a lot of bad feedback on that video, but um, that being said, I am really looking forward to this one. So we're going to watch the trailer together now. I'm going to talk much more about it afterwards and my thoughts on the whole previous DC films, etc. Because uh, I really want to get to this one right now. So we're going to click play now. <laughs> You're a man. Yeah. I mean, does that look like that? Oh, wow. I'm really looking forward to seeing our mythology. You have well. been my greatest love. Be careful, Diana. I do not deserve you. Oh, nice. Have you never met a man before? I mean, what about your father? I had no father. He was brought to life by Zeus. Well, that's neat. Humor! Actual humor in a DC movie. Always nice to see. Already, it just looks so much more colorful than usual. Oh, I'm Steve Travers, secretary. What is a secretary? I go where he tells me to go, and I do what he tells me to do. Yeah, well, where I'm from, that's called slavery. <laughs> I really like her. Fantastic. Oh, Ladies, after you. I do. I like her. Well, that, wow. I wasn't expecting to have that kind of reaction to it, but, I mean, I've been lulled in before with trailers and things like that, where the trailer looks insane and the final product, but... That is probably one of my most anticipated movies now for 2017. Um, Zack Schneider is not directing this one, thank God, but in terms of the combat and things like that, it still feels very much in line with his sort of style, and it looks like it's got the slow-mo, fast-mo kind of stuff, which I think works, and it has worked for the action style of the previous two films, and it's nice to see they've brought it back here. But oh my God, this is night and day compared to what's come before. Um, Suicide Squad is like two weeks away for us in the UK, and I am actually really looking forward to that now. When the trailers initially came out for it, I really wasn't sold on it, but the more trailers that have come out and the clips I see, it looks like they're actually having fun with it, and that's the big thing with DC. 
you can still have this dark and involved and complex themes to your stories and the tone and everything like that, but just have a bit of fun with it. You know, it it's it's Wonder Woman and it looks like it's having fun with it. Just right off the bat, the colour palette, you look at the previous films like Man of Steel, which went out of its way to make it desaturated and draw all the colour out of it. Clearly it was going off Nolan influence um, after the hugely successful Dark Knight trilogy and it was trying to sort of mirror and copycat that with the new with the new incarnation of Superman that they were trying to go for didn't really work for me. I know it did for a lot of people, but I have I hated Man of Steel when it came out. And when the trailer came out for that, I was so hyped for it. So again, that's why I'm a bit wary of this one. Uh, Batman v Superman, I kind of knew what I was getting in for after Man of Steel, so I tethered my expectations. But that, I actually kind of disliked that more when I went to see it. It didn't feel like a movie. It felt very disjointed, felt very disconnected, and I really didn't like the portrayal of Batman they went for in that. Ben Affleck was fantastic in the role of Batman, but I don't like that they had Batman killing people to the degree that he was in that movie. He was absolutely just merciless, and he felt very much like the Punisher, and not following the sensibilities and the core interesting characterization of Batman. I mean, he has killed before. Obviously, I love the Tim Burton Batman films and he kills people in that, but it was the way he was murdering people and going about it in the movie that I really didn't like. And it was just very dull. There was too much stuff going on, trying to cram too many stories into one movie. And it didn't feel very satisfying for me. But after saying that, and I, I said this at the start of my reaction for this as well, I am genuinely excited to see what DC has to offer for its movies because... You know, with Marvel and stuff like that, you've had a few new ones like Guardians of the Galaxy and Ant-Man and things like that, but mostly the way that Marvel has always marketed its superheroes, they've done a really good job of it. Like, everyone pretty much knows the Fantastic Four. They know Spider-Man, the X-Men, uh, most of the members of the Avengers. So, DC's kind of new. Like, of course, we've heard of Wonder Woman, but aside from, like, a couple of TV shows and, like, animated shows, we've never seen her properly on the big screen. And that goes for all the other heroes as well, like Aquaman, Cyborg. Uh, the Flash has got a popular TV show, granted, but again, on the big screen. It's all a first-time opportunity for all this stuff, so it'll be interesting to see how they handle it. And I have got to hand it to DC, and this is an excuse at all for their previous movies, but it looks like they have been looking at the criticism from previous movies, and they are amending that as the films go on. Um... Again, I've said this before with Batman v Superman when they kind of worked the whole collateral damage stuff from the ending of Man of Steel into it. Clearly wasn't their plan, but they just looked at the bad feedback and tried to work it in, which was a neat way of doing it. Um, but each film that comes out can't be, you know, an apology for the previous one. It really can't. And I hope now, if Suicide Squad is a success, which I really genuinely hope it is... It will sort of like alleviate my worries for this franchise moving forward. We had like a shaky foundation, but if they can somehow kind of divert that away. Um, I realise I'm just sort of talking about DC in general now, but I really, really genuinely love this trailer. And as soon as I'm done with this one and the Justice League reaction, I'm going to go back and watch this so many more times. Uh, initially, the concept on paper for this one, I think most people agree, is it's kind of uh, DC's equivalent to Captain America. Uh, the plot is very similar how it's got the multiple time jumps. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how this film handles that and if it can pace it well over the narrative over the course of the film because you've got to establish a Chris Pine's character. And I went to see a Star Trek Beyond earlier so it's kind of surreal seeing him in this role again right now. Um, you've got the whole mythology building. Um, I think it's called Themyscira. I'm probably pronouncing that horribly but I remember playing um, Injustice Gods Among Us and that was one of the maps there. Um, but it's all stuff I really, really want to see. I love sort of mythology stuff. And uh, if we're going to compare it to Marvel stuff again, uh, when Thor came out, uh, the Kenneth Branagh one, the original one, um, I loved seeing this world. I didn't really like the Earth stuff, but all the Asgard stuff I was absolutely hooked on. Good world building stuff. And visually, just the cinematography in this film looks absolutely amazing. That one shot that I mentioned in the um, in the reaction where you've got the... Um, the structure, and it looks like, almost looks like a desert, a Themyscira itself with um, all the Amazonian warriors. It looks great. And, um, you know, it's interesting. This will be the first female-led superhero film in a long time. And we've had this whole surge in sort of female characters and female heroes. You've had Rey in um, the new Star Wars. You've had uh, Furiosa in Mad Max Fury Road. And not so successfully, you've had um, the all-female 
line up in Ghostbusters. But Wonder Woman is a huge push. Wonder Woman is a great, great character. She's one of the holy trinity of DC. And she really hasn't got much attention, really, on the big screen and things like that. It's always been Batman, Superman, Batman, Superman. So, if anything, the thing I'm most looking forward to is seeing all this new stuff. I really don't know much about the Wonder Woman character. Um, what I know is sort of from the film and reading the synopsis that it's a time travel thing. And, like, flitting between World War stuff and um, her ancient mythology stuff and then the modern day stuff. Um, and that's really it. I don't know any of her villains. I don't really know much about her character. Um, what I will say is it's kind of weird that we get in this film after Batman v Superman. Clearly they weren't ready to take the plunge into a uh, female-led superhero film before Batman v Superman. And DC have kind of skipped that whole thing of establishing your heroes in individual films first and then throwing them all together. They kind of just dumped them all, not very successfully because it was all in sort of like video clips in um, Batman v Superman, but they wanted to just get them all out there now, and then they're going to do the films after, and um, I know Justice League is coming out as well, and they're still going to have solo films after that, which is really, really weird, but um, I don't know, watching them all back when it's sort of like a big cinematic universe, I'd almost quite like to watch this one before Batman v Superman, so that when she shows up in Batman v Superman, you kind of already know about her, and uh, it's kind of cool, and all the hints she gives, like with the sword and things like that in the ultimate cut, of Batman v Superman. Um, so I'm really looking forward to it. The action looks incredible. Uh, Gal Gadot, I was really unsure of when she was originally cast. I don't think she'd done much acting before. I think she cropped up in the Fast and the Furious films here and there. She was mostly a, a model, so I was like, has she got what it takes to be Wonder Woman? And if I'm going for any positives in Batman v Superman, she was probably one of the best things in that movie. Her and Ben Affleck certainly were two of the core decent positive things in that movie for me. Uh, she didn't really get all that much to do in Batman v Superman. It was very just, oh hi, I'm Wonder Woman, and then she shows up and fights a bit at the end. But, you know, her theme, and I'm so glad they kept that with the music. This is one thing that Marvel have always done really, really badly with their films, is having a consistent um, orchestral score for the character, a theme tethered to that character that they can continue into all of the films and the team-up movies. It's a sort of like a lost art now. It really, really is, and I really miss the days of um, of scores and soundtracks in general. You look at John Williams' Superman theme, it's my favourite single piece of music um, in cinema history. It is just iconic to that character, hearing that Superman theme. You immediately go, that's Superman, and every time he flies in, in those movies, that theme kicks in. It's a core part of it. Um, Danny Elfman's Batman theme is another one that gives that for me. And uh, the Danny Elfman Spider-Man theme also. Um, it is tethered to that character and it always kicks in and it, you know, it peaks and, and, you know, it crops up throughout the film. And I always love that moment when, when you have a moment like that. I think they're called leap motifs or light motifs um, in music sort of theory. It's a theme that is assigned to a specific character and what although I didn't love the soundtrack to Batman v Superman I did like that they brought back the Superman theme that they had from Man of Steel the um the sad piano theme I like that that came back I really liked the new Batman theme although it wasn't as prominent in the movie as it was in the actual soundtrack for the film if that makes any sense but the best piece of music was definitely the Wonder Woman theme and it cropped up a lot especially at the end when she shows up on screen and she blocks Doomsday uh, that theme kicks in, boom, right there. Um, it was made by Hans Zimmer, and the cellist in that song was Tina Guo. I'm probably, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. She's a fantastic musician. Um, I've got her on Facebook, and I, when I went to see Hans Zimmer live, she was there playing, and it was incredible. And I think she helped make the theme. Um, and I'm so glad it's back. I really, really am. And if DC can do that, and it can have consistent themes for the characters, and now they've looked at the criticism. On their previous films and they can move forward and alter it and change it up for these future films. Um, I'm all up for it because I adore DC so much and I really genuinely do want to see them succeed and hopefully they can because this film looks incredible. I can't wait to see more. This has definitely got me in this has definitely got me intrigued and it doesn't even come out till next year. I've got a whole extra year to wait and to see the footage they've already got for it is absolutely insane. They probably had to go into pre-production on this much, much earlier because they also need to use her in Justice League and get that filmed. Uh, but I'm excited. So 
all you commenters, let it be known that I am excited for an upcoming DC project. So yeah, that'll do it for my overly long reaction. Uh, this is probably one of the longest reaction videos I've ever done. But, you know, there's a lot of stuff to talk about and a lot of opinions I wanted to get across to you guys. So, um, yeah, please be sure to comment, subscribe. Let me know what you thought of the Wonder Woman official Comic-Con trailer. What are you looking forward to? Anything like that, please do drop me a comment. In terms of what's coming up on the channel, uh, there'll be more reactions for me. I'm going to jump on a Justice League one right now, so hopefully I don't repeat myself too much. Um, and also, all the content we got at Star Wars Celebration, I am still editing that. It's kind of finding the time to get in the editing. I'm editing that. I have to edit all these reaction videos as well as the reviews we do and, uh, you know, also balance stuff in my own life. So it is kind of um, a hard thing to juggle, but I am trying to get that edited as quick as I can because there's a lot of content I want to get out to you guys. So please do hit that subscribe button. Hope you enjoyed my reaction and until the next video, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.